What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Amanda Ray. Today we're going to be working on the Evo, finishing up a few things with the CD7 dash install that we did on our prior video. We are going to be installing a four channel can expander and the six channel module. I'm going to explain everything as I go. Um, I am going to update you on a few things. We did end up wiring up the blinkers. I'll show you all of that in just a minute. So let's jump in the car. Alright guys, so jumping into the car, we did have to pull out the dash, obviously, um, just to get back to where the blinkers are so we could connect the blinkers. They do officially work. We did have to get a relay um, and reverse the polarity. You can see right here we have all these little quick splices on here. Um, don't preferably like using quick splices. They're not my favorite thing to do. Um, we're trying to find a connector to plug into the dash harness we don't, so we don't have to use the quick splices. But let me just show you real quick that the blinkers do work. Super excited about that. <clears throat> so, AEM. We got blinkers. And then, of course, we got the hazards. All works. Good to go. Um, this light here that you're seeing here in the last video, um, the VDM install, I mentioned that the alternator was going bad. Well, it's really not. Um, so there's a battery light in the OEM dash, and the two wires that we connected together have to connect and have to have a resistance. So we connected this little LED light right here um, to act as a resistor, and it turns on and completes the circuit, allowing the alternator to work. Um, the reason why it wasn't working is because the dash harness wasn't connected straight into the OEM dash um, to complete the circuit. We also wired the dimmer switch so when the headlights turn on, the dash will automatically dim. So that way it's not as bright in the car at night and it doesn't kind of blind you. It's a pretty cool feature that you can do. Alright guys, and this here is the 4-channel can expander that I have shown you before in previous videos. Um, we're going to be installing this today. So when you're running the VDM, the dash, the ECU, you basically have no room to add anything extra. So having this extra, it's kind of like a docking station, like you can add stuff to it. Um, so basically, you're going to need to make a male connector to go into this though. The male connector that we did and made was this one right here. Um, just a simple one. We made it as long as we needed to make it. You can make it shorter or longer if you need it depending on where your location is. Ours is all discombobulated under here. Um, so that's where all of our stuff is. We're in the process of doing everything right now. So we're going to be connecting this into the 4CAN into this and then we'll, I'll show you how to do the rest of that as well. So basically that's what it's going to look like plugged in and where it sits and locates is going to be behind that plastic column right here. It's really hard to show where it's going to be. So right now we are plugging in the ECU into the 4 can and that's all done. And the next thing that we're going to be plugging into that is going to be essentially the VDM um, which is connected to the dash because the VDM has a Y on it. Um, and then that will go right into it. So that is gonna go right, right back into there. And then we're also gonna be plugging in our six channel can um, that we're gonna be installing today as well. The sensor module that makes it easy to add pressures. I'll show you that in just one minute. Next thing we're installing is gonna be this six channel can sensor module from AEM. In order to install this, it's super simple. It's plug and play. Um, it makes it easy to add pressures, temps, um, RPMs. What we're adding at the moment is going to be fuel level. Um, and you're going to have to make a male connection uh, to plug and play this into the four channel can that we just installed. So the connection that we made is this one right here. You can see it. This is the connection that we made. It goes right into it. That will plug right into the four can sensor right there. And then this white wire here that we have plugged into the back right there that is going to read fuel level so with AEM they do have an entire sheet that explains exactly which wire goes to which and how to pin it um, or where to pin it should I say um, and then you just have to find where to put it on your OEM harness um, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to read the resistance to know about the fuel level sensor 
Alright, so we're going to be using one of these dudes to read the fuel level. Um, basically, you have to have it on ohms, which is this one right here. You do have to take out your fuel level senders back here. There are two because the Evo is a saddlebag tank. Um, so you have to make sure it's reading completely on zero or completely full. Um, in order to do that, you have to basically put this onto a ground here. And then you've got the red one we have back here. We have it pinned into this back one. This is the white wire that we're going to be plugging in to read the fuel level. Um, but for now, we just have this pinned into the back of this OEM ha uh, dash harness. Um, so that should essentially let you read the correct level of ohms. And with the ohms, if it reads over 250 ohms, you're going to need to get a resistor. Um, AEM doesn't read over 250 ohms. Luckily, the Evo does not read that. It only reads, I think, like 116, um, and that's completely on E. So we're going to go ahead and show you what that looks like now with the floaters. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and show you what the Evo ohms are. Um, the cool thing is, if your car does happen to go over 250 ohms, AEM has a calculator on their website to show you what resistor you would need for that. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and show you what it looks like for full and empty on the Evo. So this is full. 6.97 is full for the Evo. When you switch it to empty, that's one side, and that's the other side. So this is essentially completely full. So that's in ohms, of course. It has to be read in ohms, and you're going to put this information into your dash design on your laptop. And then you're going to upload that into the computer, and then that will show you what your fuel level is. We'll go ahead and plug in that white wire now. So you can see this fuel level right here on the dash will actually read. All right, guys, we wired the white wire in with our quick splice, and now you can see here it shows 0%, which means the fuel floats at the bottom. So he's going to switch one over right now. And that's going to start reading some fuel. So now you've got one float flipped over, and that gives you 31%. And then when he flips the second float over, it should read all the way to 100. So there we go. Now we know our fuel level sensor works. The six channel can works perfectly. We wired everything the right way. If you guys have any questions on how to do this, don't hesitate to reach out. This is very confusing for some. Um, it was confusing for us, took us a minute to understand it and learn it, but it makes it super simple with the dash. Alrighty guys, so we've got the dash in, we've got the 4 channel can, we've got the 6 channel can, we've got the VDM, everything is installed. We do have another goodie coming for the AEM CD7 dash install, and that's going to be our EGT sensors, which we are not at that point yet. Today we're going to finish, we're going to take off all these extra gauges that we don't need. Um, we have this one, this one, and then the one that was on the steering column. So we have a new A-pillar and a new steering column cover that we're going to put on today. So we are just going to get the Evo completely put back together so the inside looks normal again. Um, we're hoping to get it on all four wheels and removing on its own power on four wheels so we can go get an alignment. So now that we have the AEM CD7 dash installed with the VDM and all the extra goodies and the sensors that we got from them, super stoked to be working with that company. Don't forget to be on the lookout. We're going to be putting everything back on the Evo today, hopefully getting it on four wheels like I mentioned. We're going to get an alignment at some point this week. So stay tuned for that first drive video. It should be pretty interesting learning how to drive with the dog box um, and the new shifter. It's all super exciting. Um, it's going to be interesting learning to drive this car again. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, guys, and I'll see you next time.